Welcome back, and in this video, we're continuing a remake of the ZX Spectrum Classic Jetpack. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating the aliens. The aliens are, <laughs> my brother and I came up with names for them. Uh, I think this one we called the Fireball. This is the, the Fuzzy Wuzzies. Uh, this is just Ball. I think this is Fighter or Plane, uh, UFO, Cross. This looked like a snow speeder from Star Wars, so we went with that. And this one is just froggy, so uh, we called it that. Um, so I'm going to create um, an alien manager uh, that is going to, to manage these things. First of all, though, I need to create um, some uh, game objects that are going to end up being prefabs. So ball one and ball two, they're going to be animated. Uh, so this is going to be ball. Um, so there's ball one, so when we play this, we should see the animation of ball. So it's a little fast, so what I can do is I can go into the animation of ball. Uh, go to animator. Um, to, no, it's not controller. Uh, where are we? Oh no, wait, sorry, what am I doing? Uh, window animation animation um, let's bring that into here because we'll start using this now so our ball uh, why does our ball not have wait our gemma doesn't have okay our ball doesn't have an animation oh it does have an animation there we go um so if we make this 12, hopefully that should slow it down a bit. Um, no. Let me drag that out. Let's just do that then. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Uh, and then, and then probably needs to come back a little bit. Oh, who knows? Pro probably that. I'm mucking about now. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, a good size. All right. So that's our ball, really. So we can. Um, Drag that into the prefabs. Uh, let's create a folder in here. Actually, that's not bother. Let's just drag it in here. So we'll drag it into there. So we can get rid of ball. We don't need that now. And then back into our artwork, um, we have our cross um, and our frog. Um, what else do we have? We've got our plane and our snow speeder and these are all these are all just uh, basic ones so we can just drag them in to here and that creates our prefabs for us um, like so get rid of that and then back to our artwork and then we do the same thing for fireball one fireball two and drag that in there and we'll call it fireball like that and our animation, we're just going to drag it out to two, so it looks like that there. Okay. Uh, um, and I'm not entirely sure that it is an animation as well. I'm thinking about this off the top of my head, but I'm not entirely sure if it's just uh, that or um, uh, it is uh, two separate, like two choices, two different versions of it. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but for our purposes, it's going to be an animation. So with prefab. Drag it to there, and then this one's going to be called Fuzzy. Let's drag to there. Okay, so good. 
to these. All right, so now we need an alien manager. Um, alien manager. Uh, I'll drag that up to here. And of course, we'll put it zero, zero, zero. So there's our zero, zero, zero. And then we have a, a spawn point. We need to know what aliens we're going to get, uh, what wave it's going to be. Um, so the the waves, um, we need to create that in a script. So let's create a alien manager script. Manager. And then the alien manager is going to have a public object um, wave shapes. Um, to area alien manager add component alien manager and our wave shapes um prefabs where are we so the first shape is the fireball uh the second one is the fuzzies uh then it's the ball cross Frog. No, it can't be frog. Uh, speeders. Frog. And plane. And again, it doesn't really matter which one it is. Um, but we need to know what wave we're currently on. Um, and we need to do the same thing for our, so our rocket manager. Where's our rocket manager? Our rocket manager. Uh, yeah, this is our rocket manager is going to have initialization in there for the from the the um, what do you call it? Oh, from the player prefs. So when we load a, when we load in the next level, uh, before we do that, we're going to set the next player player pref to say, okay, we're going to be wave one number one now because we were wave zero, and that's going to um, send the uh, the player to the the correct. Or it's going to set up the screen. It's going to set up the screen for the next wave. Um, the next one I want to do is I want to have colors in here because uh, each one of these has got random colors, but it's the spectrum colors. So I need to have public color um, spectrum colors, um, and there are effectively six colors because we're not going like to include black in this. So we've got our spectrum colors. So um, we're going to have six. Um, and then our first color is going to be white. That's easy. And then our second color is yellow. Um, but it's a kind of dark-ish yellow that kind of color. OK. Uh, and then we get green, which again is for the fuck about that. Uh, we get a kind of cyan, which is about there. Uh, we got a blue, which is about here. And we have a red, which is roughly here. Okay, so that's our random colors. Um, Now, what we could do though is we could actually just have that on each. Yeah, let's have that on there. Okay, let's have a create um, C sharp script set up uh, alien initialization. Alien init, I'm going to call it. Um, and I'm actually going to move those colors to there. I wonder if I can do that. Copy. Um, uh, where are we? Set scripts alien in it. Public or okay. So I need something with a. a Knit. So I'm going to put this on here. So our fireball is just basically going to have this thing on it that is going to uh, uh, let's 
say that. There. Oh yeah, there we go. Paste. Boom, there we go, there's the colors. Okay, so now I can go back to our alien manager in here. And I can get rid of the spectrum colors because we don't actually need them in there. So when you when we start this, uh, so if I go into our alien init script, uh, what I'm gonna say is uh, get component sprite renderer um, dot um, color equals uh, spectrum colors random dot uh, range and it's going to be zero to spectrum colors dot length uh, oh this makes sense so what i'm saying is so the range goes from uh, returns a, a random int between min inclusive max exclusive so from 0 to length minus 1 effectively so it's whatever the length of the colors are there the length of the array is uh, and then that's going to set that color and that's all we want to do for this one so when we run this uh, we're just going to get random colors Is that getting pushed to the back? I think that's getting pushed to the back. Let's look at the scene. Uh, no, it is. Oh, that's weird. Is it removing? I'll take that off. So it's just not sure. Okay, so that's working. And if I set the color in here, it sets it fine. So that works. But it's not working if I set it at the start. Uh, get component sprite renderer color. Um, okay, a bit of a loss here. <laughs> well, so much for that idea. Um, start. if it works in a week. It's weird the fact it would work in start though. No, it doesn't like that either. Um, uh, animator. Rebind. Rebind animation properties and mesh data with the animator. Do I have to do that? Seems a bit silly. I'm going to try something here. Yield. here <clears throat> shows it as white and then it sets the color and immediately disappears all of, all of these are alpha zero <laughs> don't know why I didn't notice it but they're all alpha zero so uh, let that be a lesson to you
make sure you uh, why would it why would it default to alpha zero I mean I guess it's defaulting to zeros but that's that's quite annoying um, and I'm gonna have to read this is my test code in here um, so I can just take that out that back, take that out as well, take this out and void, take that out there and away we go. Okay, it's random randomizing to white. That's not great. Okay, um, um, Time, smooth time, one skill time, time, time is the beginning of the frame, no, time is double, no, uh, time is level load, delta time, no, okay, maybe it's just the first one's always going to be, the first one's always going to be white, I guess, okay. Oh no, there you go. I guess you just have to have a little bit of faith in randomness. All right, cool. Okay, so then we've got our uh, random color. Uh, let's go back to our alien manager here. So we want to um, we want to decide whether it's left or right, whether we're going to spawn an alien or not. Um, So um, decide so if it's right side we need to flip the alien uh, because they need to be facing the other direction um, if That's all we need. And then the behavior, though, um, the behavior is going to be uh, let's create a folder here because this is getting a bit messy in here. So I'll create a folder uh, alien behavior. Um, so I'll create a fireball alien. Uh, and they can go in a sort of um, like a stepped pattern so uh, there um, so let's do public float um, y gradient equals f um, so uh, we're just going to make them go up the screen, or rather down the screen, I guess. Um, uh, void update. Um, this equals new. Oh yeah, I need uh, public float hex direction uh vector three and it's going to be x direction y gradient i mean it could be y y direction as well uh y gradient uh times whatever the speed is 10 times time dot delta time so if i go 
to our fireball alien. Um, we're going to add fireball alien. I'm going to do that there. And then back to the game. So when we start, the fireball alien should move across the screen like that. So it's a wee bit slow. And also the, the Y gradient is a little bit uh, too much, so 0 0.25. Uh, and then let's say public float speed equals 16. Still a bit slow. Uh, 24. We can change this default anyway. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and then once it gets off the screen, we need to kill it. Um, and we can handle that uh, in here as well. So we can say uh, if transform dot position dot x uh, is greater than something. Let's see where it lands up. Um, there's a fireball. Uh, so our position is one eighty five on the x. Okay. So 185, 185, destroy. Um, or transform up. Actually, we can do. So no matter whether it's off the left hand side or the right hand side, um, that's going to get destroyed there. Uh, the fireball alien, we also need to uh, public rule flip alien. Um, I start uh, sprite renderer flip x equals flip alien. So that, <clears throat> that's going to mean, that's going to allow us to flip the alien. Um, okay. So that is our alien that's moving that way. And our alien gets destroyed, which is fine. Um, for... What are we going to have here? So that's our alien. That's our first alien is our fireball alien. Um, now, what are we going to do here? We need to do something else. We need collision detection as well. So if um, if it's touching that, that We have hitboxes here, don't we? Uh, platforms, here we go. Platform, left platform, center platform, right platform. Okay, so that just has, uh, it's not triggers. So we need to decide if that's going to hit. Um, but we also need to know what it's tagged as. So I need to tag that as a platform. So uh, I'm going to add a tag here called platform. And I'm just going to tag these as platform. So platform. I think I can do that for the other two as well. Platform. Okay. So if we have. Um, Oh well, yeah, we need a uh, 
we need an explosion as well. So let's have uh, an explosion. We we'll go back to artwork. We'll go to here. Yeah, there we go. There's our explosion there. Um, so our first explosion is this one. I just need to grab that. One. Uh, and then this is our second one. It's all right. And then our final one is going to be this one here. Uh, okay. Um, so now we got our explosion one, two, and three. I'm going to drag it into there. <clears throat> and then drag it off to here. So it's now going to play that explosion there. Um, I think maybe yeah, we do. Well, then it just dissipates into nothing. I think that's fine. Um, and our explosion is just going to be the <clears throat> default white color. But it does need to destroy itself. So let's call that explosion. Oh. Uh, and then go back to our scripts and create uh, explosion. And drag it to there. Um, I wonder if we can do get animator. Um, get component animator. Let me look this up first. Um, right, so apparently if you do normalize time, what does it say there? Animation state normalize time. Get animation state. <laughs> what? Get current animation state info. Doesn't exist. Thanks. I mean, this is from 10 years ago, so. Bravo. Animator current. That doesn't exist, does it? Oh, no, it does. Zero. Uh, dot normalize time. Uh, Actually, let's do uh, our animator um, while So according to this, the normalized time, um, it, it should, uh, what does it say down here? Uh, the decimal play count, current progress, 2.25 would tell you the animation is played two times and the current state is 25%. So it's 225. Using modulo with one gives you the, always gives you the progress. So if it's less than one, then it's still playing. And if it isn't that, then it's finished playing and I can destroy the object. 
Oh boy. Okay. Well, let's see if that works. So the explosion should only play once, is what I'm what I'm thinking here. So if we move our animation to there, to there, and then to there, uh, and we have our, an, our explosion script on there, so this should play just once and destroy itself. And it does. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. So uh, if this fireball hits, I see it's missing that one. So if I get the fireball and we put it in a trajectory with this, if it hits the platform, it should delete itself. Well, let me just move that up a wee bit and hope that'll hit it. There you go, so it should hit it there. So once it deletes itself, we should spawn the explosion. So uh, I'm going to create a prefab for the explosion, Whoop, like that. Delete explosion there. And inside our Fireball alien. Uh, I'm going to have public game object explosion, um, and then we're going to have on collision enter 2D. Game object dot tag equals platform. Uh, if it's platform, then we want to say uh, bar copy equals instantiate explosion. So we're instantiating the explosion here. Uh, copy dot transform dot position equals uh, transform dot position. Uh, destroy game object. So we're going to create a copy of the explosion set it to be the current position of the object, and then destroy that object. So again, going into our fireball, uh, our fireball script, we need to drag that explosion into there. Okay. So it's going to be up there. Didn't do a damn thing. <laughs> Because it doesn't have, oh right, okay, yeah, uh, it doesn't have collisions on it, um, and I think as well, don't think these have got rigid bodies on them either. Okay, so this needs a rigid body on it as well. So rigid body 2D. Um, we need to make it kinematic. So I think you. Oh, see, we want it to be that. Yeah, that's okay. So it needs to be that, and then we need to have, oh shoot, we need to do it inside here, don't we? Um, add uh, rigid body 2D. Box collider 2D, okay. So that's that there, back to here. So we've got a rigid body, and Uh, so we've got a rigid body, once again, box collider, so, oh yeah, we should turn off gravity, shoot, uh, oh, there's rigid body there, gravity scale, uh, Which gravity affects this body? Can I say zero in the hope that that works? That did not work. But it did bounce quite nicely along the ground there. So kudos to that. Um, uh, 
only the fact that I just don't want it to constraints. If I take it off of that, it won't take any part in any of the sliders. So, uh, kinematic. Oh, there you go, kinematic. Okay. All right. Okay, that's fine. Kinematic. That's good. That's the one I was looking for. Well, it still didn't work. <laughs> Just sailed right through it. Uh, where are you? Okay. So, private void on collision enter 2D. Let's set a breakpoint here and see if it did actually hit it. Because uh, maybe it did hit it and it just ignored it when it hit it. No, just uh, completely ignored it. Um, I wonder if I change that to dynamic and then this is, is that negative 10,000? Something like that. Uh, some along those lines. Uh, I wonder if. Whoa. Um. Okay. So wait, why did it? Why did that not work before? If I move this further out, uh, fireball. If I move that to there, is it just going to dip? I wonder. Oh, okay. Well, we found our winning formula zero. <laughs> so I had that before and it didn't work. Oh, Unity, don't you ever change. Right, so we've got Fireball in there, so we can get rid of Fireball just now. Now, in the Alien Manager, we're going to, it's going to be the, the first wave. So, um, what's the Alien Manager? Um, update. Actually, let's do I enumerator uh, start. Uh, yield return you wait for one so every one second we're just gonna wait then we're gonna spawn something so our public int wave equals zero um, we're gonna say um, game object uh, copy equals instantiate wave shapes so we pick pick one we pick a prefab from from the list um, we then say copy dot transform dot uh, position equals um, and then uh, dot x equals and then it's going to be whatever the right side is so uh, random dot range uh, it's going to be 50 50 uh, 0.5 um, 180 uh, negative 180 oh yeah can't do that We're going to say uh, is full uh, is right um, 
x equals is right and that, that, and that. Okay, so we choose to see if you're on the left or the right. Um, and we do that. Uh, our alien in knit. Oh, see, alien in knit has got to go there as well. Okay, let's take out flip alien. Um, and these values here and put them in alien in yeah let's take that one out here because we might need that for other things so inside alien init we're now going to have this So our, I mean, you could, yeah, we could just cache that somewhere the, the sprite render, but uh, we're going to flip the alien if it's that. So, um, in our alien manager, so that there. Um, so now we say copy dot get component alien in it um, dot flip alien equals uh, is right. So if you're on the right hand side, then we're going to flip the alien because it's going to face that way. And then the Y is going to be, um, where's our Y value? So the tippy top Y value, um, I just grab something. Uh, Grab frog. Our tippy top y value is about here, which is 140. Oh, sorry, 88. So our tippy top y value is 88. Um, so that means our range is 176. Is that right? So uh, float y equals random dot range 0 to uh, 176 um, and because that's 0 that's our 0 mark right actually sorry I'll write that there so our frog is yeah 88 and then this is negative 88 um, so that's going to be um, negative 88 plus that, and that gives us our y. So then we can say copy dot transform dot position equals new vector 3 uh, x, y, 0. Um, so that puts us in the position there. Um, we also need to set up the alien. Oops. So switch case, switch, uh, sorry, uh, wave, uh, case zero, set up fireball, and we don't have any more aliens. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and we also need to pass in as right as well. Um, and we're going to say uh, fireball, fireball, alien. So we can get that component there, and then we can say uh, alien dot um, x direction equals uh, alien dot y direct 
ride gradient equals, and then it's going to be um, minus a half plus one. Uh, so it's going to go from negative a half to actually, what is the, the one we've got there? That made it pretty good. Um, Prefabs, prefabs, fireball wheelie. Here we go. Uh, oh, one and one. Okay. Let's say it's going to be negative 0 0.25 plus random range uh, 0 to 0 0.5. Uh, why is it all like that? Oh yeah, okay. And then, uh, okay, and then that's that one there. So for a while. Okay, and to be in this we also need to set for our fireball alien. Uh, speed. Um, equals um, 16 plus random dot range um, 0 comma 4 so just make them a little bit more random um, okay I think we've got it I think that should clear that there Oh, don't have alien in it on this. Aha. Aha, ha, 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 ha. Okay, so I can get rid of these two here. Oh, well, it's going in backwards. That's not good. Um, how can that be out of range? <laughs> that makes no sense. Unless it's not getting set. Do I not set it? Oh, shoot. I have to do that for every single one of them, aren't I? Oh, that is a good point. Damn it. Yeah, okay, that might have been a bone handy decision, but I'm sticking with it now. Uh, okay, so our initial one, Fireball, um, Alien in it doesn't have any spectrum colors. So what one did have a spectrum color? Oh boy, you know what I bet it was? Ah, oh, damn it. Um, I bet I set it on there and not actually, yeah, that's what I did. I set it on there and not there. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea then. Um, all right, let's not have that an alien in it. Um, So our alien manager is going to get the colors back again, uh, and I'm just going to specify the color. So inside here, I'm going to say copy dot get component alien init color equals spectrum colors random dot range zero comma Spectrum colors dot length and inside alien init. Um, I'm going to have public uh, color color. 
get return uh, color. There you go. It's a little little cheat there rather than having to set it. Um, so we don't need that. Um, yeah, it's a bit redundant that one now, but yeah, there we have it. Uh, and then for our colors, we need to obviously assign those colors to there. So back to our six here. So I'm going to make sure that we have 255. Um, it's slightly duller than that. So let's make it that. Um, that one there. And then blue. Here. And then of course, lastly, but not leastly, the red color. Okay. So now, doo -doo -doo -doo, you get aliens coming in. Oh, see they're hitting that barrier. Um, Play field, where's the play field? Play field is there. Uh, drop zone, vent. There's barriers left and right. Left side block, right side block, ground barrier, top barrier. So left side barrier, right side barrier. Okay, so I need to have this as a separate layer so I can get them to ignore it. So I'm going to do add layer, uh, and I'll call this alien ignore. Um, or actually invisible to alien because uh, I want them to be able to transform through it. So left side block, right side block. Uh, I want that on the invisible to alien layer. And then for the aliens, all of these guys, the prefabs, Oh shit, I need to have that as a layer. Uh, add layer, uh, alien layer. I think layer is a bit redundant, but whatever. Uh, that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. So that's all our aliens. So then I'm going to call that alien layer. And then inside our project settings, uh, physics 2D, scroll all the way down there. And we'll see alien layer and we will uncheck the invisible to alien and that means there won't be any collision detections against those two objects so it should just go straight through so here we go so it's going straight through um, i'm only seeing one one lone fireball And that's about to die. So our alien manager isn't working the way I thought it was going to work. Oh, right. Okay. That's why. Um, okay. Now we should have aliens every one second. There we go. Whoa, there's a lot of aliens. Oh, and it's working. There you go. They're they're dying. That's good. Okay, and we need to get them to die on uh, that the bottom one as well. Um, okay. Uh, right, so the bottom one, each one of these platforms, center platform, is called a platform. Uh, the ground barrier, uh, we need to tag that as platform as well. 
that's not going to affect anything else other than the aliens. So now when the aliens hit on it, uh, we obviously need to calm down. It's got to be maybe every 10 seconds or something for those ones. Um, yeah, because there's far too many of these aliens. Uh, so this one here, this red one, uh, is probably too far up. And I can get them to die when the player hits as well. We do that. Okay, there you go. I just saw one of the ground ones hitting. Oh, in fact, that yellow ground one's going to hit. Boom, there we go. Okay. Okay, we're getting some rotation there. So that can easily be fixed as well. So we go to prefab, fireball, and then our rigid body 2D. Um, we can stop it from rotating on the Z. Uh, so that will prevent that. Um, we can get the play, we can get it to die when the player hits it as well. So the tag is player as well. Um, it's always going to kill the player, but it's going to kill the, the fireball as well. Uh, so we need that. Um, fireball alien equals platform or collision. Game object dot tag equals player. So if it's a player, then it's going to uh, destroy itself as well. So now as a player, I can just go run into things and it'll, because we don't have the, the player dying just yet, um, but we can sure get them to die. There you go. All right. Go. I'm going around killing, <laughs> killing the aliens. There we go. Nice. Okay. That's great. And obviously, we can have the player dying as well. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to kill the player though, so we may have to rethink about that because we want the player to still exist. We just don't want them to appear on the screen um, while they're dead. Well, actually, we could probably just spawn them again. It's just a player. Yeah, we could just probably spawn them again. Um, do we have. A rocket manager and a score manager. Um, we don't really have a game manager. Uh, we really need a game manager uh, or something just to kind of look after the, the whole game. So let's, let's create a game manager while we're in here. Oh, that's nice, spell game manager. Manage it. Um, and create okay, manager. Whoa, what is that? That was weird. Create. C sharp script game uh, can I not create is game manager uh, maybe game manager is a known thing Uh, game manager. Uh, 
It talks about asteroids. What? I am totally lost here. What is going on here? All right, let's, well, let's see if it runs. If it runs, it runs. Okay, so it's running. So Game Manager. That is weird. I've never seen that doing that before. Is this a new thing in Unity? Okay. Um, public uh, game object um, player. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prefab with Jetman, um, and then so Jetman is now a prefab, and he starts at that position, um, and I want to delete him from the scene um, and then I want to start it up again so I think I have a reference to this somewhere and I think it's in rocket manager no uh, score manager drop manager alien manager one of these actually let's go to if I go to the locomotion script here uh, I think I turn it off and on update yeah so if it's update is landing if shape is inactive in hierarchy set active to be true okay um, so I think it starts off as not active in hierarchy no, that's working. Okay, so when you start it up, it sets it to be false. You know what? I'm just going to delete it because if I, if I delete it, that's fine. And if I drag it in here, if I go to the prefabs and I drag in Jetman, it's going to put it back in the same place anyway. So worst case scenario, uh, it's not going to work. So... Um, uh, where are we? So if we do that, uh, so if it's landing, you want to return. Um, okay, and then the game manager. Avoid uh, start. Of like game object. Actually, it's going to be private game object current player so when you start it's going to create a new instance of the player uh, and it's going to dump them in the middle of the screen the way that it always did and it should just work and it didn't uh, where's Jetman? Oh, you know what? <laughs> uh, it really helps you put a script in there. Okay, so let me put that there. Put it up with the rest of the, the scripts there. Um, and then, well, we don't need player anymore. Boom, that's gone. Uh, so our game manager now has a reference to Jetman. So... Now we should ha see no difference. There we go. There's Jetman. And you should be able to still do all that kind of stuff. Okay. So when you die, though, um, we need to signal that the player has died. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to our singleton one behavior game manager. And we say public void player died. Current player, uh, it's going to be destroy. 
actually I'm going to do start coroutine uh, kill player So I'm going to say destroy current player. Actually, just to be sure, I'm going to say if current player is not equal to null, destroy current player. Current player equals null. Yield return new wait for seconds one. Let's say wait for a second and then say current player equals instantiate. Instantiate player. And then in uh, our locomotion, uh, we also need to mark that as being an alien, so we only have a fireball here, so I'm going to... Uh, do we have that as an enemy? No. Let's say alien. Okay, so we'll go back to our fireball and say alien. And then for our prefab for Jetman, we also want to have uh, actually, no, we don't. We want to have in our game manager public game object explosion. Um, um, so um, we want to say our explosion. Oh. that and then we say copy dot transform dot position equals position um, and so that will destroy the current player yeah so we don't need to touch jetman they don't need to know about explosions but the game manager does need to know about explosions. So I need to drag explosion into there. So now if the player touches an alien, they die. So if I go and hit this alien, well, <laughs> I do need to touch locomotion because I need to check to see if, go away creative cloud. Uh, <laughs> Uh, else if collision dot tag equals um, and then this is going to be alien uh, game manager dot instance dot uh, player died so we're just going to let the game manager know and the game manager can handle it and do what it needs to do which should be spawn an explosion wait for a second and then replace you in the, the level. That's trigger, isn't it? Oh. Those are triggers. There needs to be collisions. Public void on uh, on collision, enter collision, enter 2D okay, so if the game object is that, then we're going to this there we go nice okay 
So we get the two, two die. Okay, I think that's a good place to, to leave this video. Um, I think we made some good progress today. Um, let's not jinx it. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a old thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it the old thumbs down. Uh, leave a comment uh, below as well. All of these things help uh, rise us up in the in the YouTube algos, and then uh, I really appreciate it because it really drives um, the the channel forward a little bit. Um, and as always, if you did enjoy this, you got this far, and you want timely reminders of when I put new videos up, then don't forget to hit the old subscribe button and notification bell, and YouTube will work its algorithms and and give them give give unto you these videos whatever um <laughs> or not it's up to you uh, it's a free country uh but until next time thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll catch you in the next one bye, -bye.